Hi, have you ever played a tabletop game? I mean, any tabletop game. Sure you have. Think of your favorite one. Is it poker, dominoes, risk, Yahtzee, backgammon, Catan, Monopoly? Monopoly, really? Okay, fine. Whichever is your favorite game, in all likelihood, you have this to thank for making that game possible. Yes, this little dot. Games as we know them simply would not exist without this little dot known as the pip. Single solid objects used for counting are everything to the games we know and love. And it's not just physical games. Video games rely on pips too. Just look at Miss Pac-Man. It's pips all the way down. From Mario's coins to D&D satanic dice to every single poker game ever played, pips are everywhere in gaming. Let's take a quick dive into the history of pips and the impact they've had on our lives. Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to Playing Games. Please subscribe, comment, and like. Put simply, pips are universal number symbols. They're written in the language of our oldest ancestors. Let's have a look at this. It's a reproduction of an ancient Neanderthal Rosetta Stone. It's a D6, AKA your most common die. Each of the six sides has a different number represented by pips. One pip means one, two pips mean two, three, three, and so on. Here's another historical document. It's called a domino. Look, more pips. This one has five pips, meaning it's a five. Let's fast forward to something a little younger. Dominoes are an evolution of dice, and cards are an evolution of dominoes. Playing cards took pips to the next level by letting you put 52 individual pips in the palm of your hand. While there is no proof that the first pip was found on a die, or was even a dot, pips as notches have been discovered as far back as 44,000 BC. Or if you're a crazy person, 39,000 years before Adam and Eve. Once our ancestors discovered the power of recording numbers, you can imagine they gamified it right away. Dice have been discovered as far back as 3100 BC. They weren't just limited to six-sided dice. The Egyptians invented the D20 some 2000 years before the first Ren Faire. Dice have a long history of games which use no other pieces but the dice themselves. That's because they're powerful, portable, random number generators. What do I mean by random number generator? Well, tossing this coin gives me a random 50-50 chance. Will it be heads or tails? Should I go left? Should I go right? It's randomly generating a choice. A six-sided die will give me a random number of one through six. This one will give me a number one through 20. So with each roll, I have a one in 20 chance of getting a 20, a 15. I never get nat 20s. With these little generators, no computer programming or fancy machines are needed. Just this little die. It's a hand-powered random number generator. And what an invention it is. After some time, it was discovered that the die used as a random number generator could work in the background of more sophisticated games. Take Risk, for example. It's a game of strategy, not luck, right? Well, when battling your opponent, you still need to have a bit of randomness to make the warfare more interesting. So you use these dice to spice up the game and introduce just enough unpredictability. Even Shoots and Ladders with its Wheel of Fortune as its random number generator is basically a six-sided die. In the case of our board game, the spinner is missing, so we use a die instead. These pips move the players up ladders and down the chutes. Even though Candyland uses cards to play, look at these little squares, they're pips. I hate getting stuck on that space. I can never get that blue pip to get me out of there. Computer AI runs on sophisticated random number generators. Behind the scenes, random number generators are being run to decide whether or not to let the AI defend itself or strike your avatar. Pips are everywhere in video games. Look at the hearts for this character. Those are pips, indicating how much life your character has. This one has 13. Dang it. This one has four. Dang it, this one has one? Cards really aren't that different from dice. Really, what's the difference between these? You have one through six, either way. Cards just have more numbers. But really, this pack is just a D52. So I shuffle the cards. I have a one in 52 chance of it being the Ace of Diamonds. I'm a lucky guy. Each card shows pips. The suits exist to keep the pips from getting too confusing. Look at these spades. One through 10 and three court cards. Sure, the court cards are an exception, but we're willing to accept that because we know their ranks, 11, 12, 13. We could make the next card a 14 pip card or a different kind of court card, but that would make it so illegible that card play would be onerous and probably never would have taken off. So instead of going to a 14th pip card, cards reset back to one, but with a different symbol. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. With four distinct suits, we have 52 distinct pips. This way we can make a deck of cards much more random than a die. And that innovation made card decks perhaps the most elegant and powerful portable random number generators. Or PRNGs. Let's make that a thing. Today's pips continue to run in the background of just about everything. Take binary code, for example. It's just one pip or no pip. Sounds a bit like this, right? Nailed it. Pips give unique meaning to otherwise identical objects. They are a universal mathematical language and shuffling them, rolling them, electrifying them, 
lets us enjoy the most amazing games ever made. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Be merry. Help pip in to this channel and we'll grow like an ant. You are great. Thanks for watching.